Hey, right right next to Ted. George right. doesn't know the right. I haven't got weights in my pocket. By her own admission, Martha Grace Blackburn had failed her first year of university because of laziness. I feel that I've spent a few years underground. I've had a lot to learn, and I mean a lot, she told a reporter. Now, at 39, Martha Blackburn was the same age her father had been when CFPL first went on the air. She inherited a debt-free company that was considered one of the best in Canada to work for. Walter, her father, knew what he wanted to do and did it. Martha would ask, and, and she had a different style. There was nothing, uh, you never felt an ivory tower thing with her. With WJ, you always knew you were going into the throne room. But if Blackburn had any doubts about her own abilities, she never showed it. In 1986, she bought out the shares of her older sister, gaining sole ownership of the company. She divorced her husband and business colleague and reverted to her maiden name. I looked around and knew there was only one person who could fill his shoes, she said of her father. And that person was me. I am a Blackburn. Overnight, she became a darling of the business community. The Globe and Mail, McLean's Magazine and Report on Business all published profiles on her. With Martha Blackburn at the helm, the conservative company she inherited was about to change in ways that would have amazed and troubled her father. Although CFPL's schedule had expanded since its first broadcast, one thing had not changed. More than half its programming was furnished by the CBC. Relations between CFPL and the network had been souring for over a decade. During one New Year's Eve telecast, CBC cut away from hometown boy Guy Lombardo, infuriating thousands of Londoners. In June 1983, the station lost precious ad revenue when it was forced to carry the entire Progressive Conservative Convention. Disaffiliation from the CBC, it was argued, would give CFPL more flexibility in programming and strengthen its ability to compete against local cable services. In the grand scheme of Canadian broadcasting at that point, there had been several stations that had gone independent, had been independent for several years and seemed to be very successful. And there's a herd instinct inside Canadian broadcasting. And uh, at that point, the herd instinct was sort of go independent. On September 4th, 1988, CFPL announced it was going solo with the slogan, Let the Fun Begin. The station held a gala celebration with film director Norman Jewison and actress Margot Kidder as guests. No question about it, you had that feeling, quite properly so, that we were in the big leagues and we were playing hardball. It was a good feeling, a real good feeling that we were launching something very different. There were problems from the start. Chum Limited had just introduced a rebroadcast transmitter in Woodstock, bringing City TV to the local market. This meant movie packages purchased by City were no longer available to CFPL, kneecapping the station's programming schedule. Two more Toronto stations, CFMT and CBL, came to London, further fragmenting the viewing audience. Cable companies introduced a new slate of specialty channels that fall. The centralization of local businesses to Toronto moved advertising decisions away from London. Between 1989 and 1990, Canada's private television stations saw profits plummet by 85%. In the early 1990s, the Ontario economy went into a recession. Everything that could go wrong was going wrong, and all at once. It became apparent, particularly as we hit the mid to late 80s, that it was just about impossible uh, uh, to have a standalone operation in television. The problem with it is, is, is straight dollars and cents, it's costly. You're being, you've got, if you have a standalone operation, you're up against groups and chains. Their purchasing power is infinitely greater than yours. From independence on, there had been this thing of CFPL was going to buy Hamilton, and then Hamilton was going to buy CFPL, and there were it was almost like the the rumor of the quarter or the rumor of the month about who was going to buy who. Ontario. 
The station failed in its attempt to buy CHCH Hamilton and to open an independent station in Ottawa. The CRTC's rejection of the Hamilton purchase cost CFPL $8 million, making it the most damaging regulatory decision ever suffered by the station. Less than two years after going solo, CFPL and CKNX had lost $1.4 million. In May 1990, CFPL cancelled three local shows, eliminated 17 jobs, and reduced its local programming by over 20%. The bloodletting spread to Wingham, where CKNX was reduced to a skeleton staff. The people in, in, uh, in this station and a lot of the older stations just never saw layoffs. Uh, it, was, it was always a building process, and you were adding people. Um, but once we got up to strength and then realized that some of the programs weren't going to achieve what we needed to achieve, then we had to cancel the programs. In May of 1992, Martha Blackburn announced the unexpected and the unthinkable. Douglas Bassett, president of Bayton Broadcasting, and Martha Blackburn, chairman of the Blackburn Group, arrived in good spirits at CFPL Television this morning. They came to announce that CFPL-TV and CKNX-TV in Wingham have been sold to Bayton Broadcasting. For the first time in its history, CFPL-TV would be owned by someone else. But Martha Blackburn would never see the changeover. Those who knew the many facets of Martha Blackburn's life came together to say goodbye today. More than 1,000 people, family, friends, and business associates crowded into St. Paul's Cathedral for a service of celebration and thanksgiving for the life of Martha Blackburn. Within 10 years of Martha Blackburn's death, her family's dominance of southwestern Ontario media would be over. For many, the independence of CFPL-TV marked the beginning of the end for the Blackburn Empire. I never look back and, and say I wish I had done something that, uh, you, as I say, you, you gather the facts that you have at the time and you get as much advice as you can and, and you take that direction. And um, if it's wrong, it's wrong, but if you don't do it, uh, you know, you might, be, you might have been wrong not to do it. Uh, eventually, we probably would have been forced into disaffiliation, but we were better off to wait until that time because we were doing very nicely financially and getting good audience ratings. Uh, anyhow, the move was made after I retired, and I was not in favor of it. And I think my point has been proved in financial ways. <laughs> Let's move upstairs to the lovely Jenny Jones. Hi, Jenny. Hi. Tell don't, me what Velocipede is. Don't believe it for a minute down there, you guys. <laughs> well, you look nice, Howard, really. Well, I'm wearing pants. You, no, you're wearing a shirt. I like the shirt. Really, that's Thank a good you. shirt. Somewhere there's a Pinto going around with no seat covers down there. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, 